this is Tony from Her Homestead Skills. So I was out and about shopping this morning actually with Mark. Uh, he did go out this morning and came back after he realized he forgot his phone and that was about an hour later. So I suggested that we go shopping and this was not for food, but it was um, some shopping that I wanted to do and uh, wanted to do with him. So we accomplished that and that was all fine and dandy and then he had to go to a couple of stores himself to get a few bits and pieces for something he's working on so he we did that as well and uh, I'm back now and I think that uh, a lot of you have mentioned that you're um, converting closets into pantry spaces or second bedroom or an unused bedroom. Lucky you if you have one of those. I don't seem to have that much space but I have had a pantry in a small closet for an awful long time and um, it actually holds a lot depending on how you configure it and uh, I'm going to show you mine. Now, I have shown this um, pantry in the past, but if you look down at the bottom, here I have <laughs> three buckets, and I have jars in front of them so that the door will close. And we move up, I have one shelf, two shelves, three shelves, four, a fifth, a sixth, and then the top shelf, which houses some of the larger jars and some boxes. Now he's really big on eating crackers these days, so we have some boxes of crackers up there. Now, this holds a substantial amount of items, and it is my go-to closet for a number of things. And as you can see, I have chili right there that uh, I made a huge pot of and we eat that, we've eaten that quite consistently since I made it but I still have a number of jars left there and what we'll do is uh, make a bed of rice and have chili on top of that and that's when one jar is adequate for the two of us or at least one and a half, he likes more chili than I do so he'll open up one and a half jars or open up two jars and put half in the refrigerator so okay that is just a small portion of what I've got stashed away. <laughs> well, this particular closet has the shelves actually tied down pretty good and solid. There, Mark um, lock them in or he tied them down to the wall so that there is no movement whatsoever. And uh, it's, it's very sturdy. I use these little cases just to hold the smaller jars and yes I could make them pretty or whatever. I like this so that I can actually see the jars and see what's in them and then of course I've got the Bernardin jars which are not as visible for what's in it. But this shelf is extremely, actually this is two shelves and it is a specific width that fit in this closet perfectly leaving me maybe an inch on either side and I have reconfigured the shelves a number of times so that I could fit more and more product in there and that is a bit of a pain if you're going to reconfigure it because you've got to pull everything out uh, redo your shelves and reconfigure it again and put all your jars back but uh, I'm happy with the solution I've arrived at for now okay <clears throat> closet number two I have this one is not wide enough to put more shelves uh, the um, it's not wide enough to put the steel shelves in it's uh, much more narrow so I make do with the shelving that was there and I use this for oh buckets at the bottom my canner and some larger jars now I have pistachios and pasta there and I have a whole bunch of other items that are larger quantity because these shelves are uh, narrower and taller and not really adjustable and here you can see I have some more pasta and I have my apple slices that I dehydrated and as we go up 
I have got hidden away behind there my oh and that's packed so tight you wouldn't have any idea how how well I package that uh, particular shelf I have my tomato machine in there I have a few more boxes of um, food saver wrap that I managed to buy on sale and uh, my Pizzelli makers I have a lot of electronic equipment in there as well but it's all hidden away those are things that I don't use too often and once again these are only two of the closets that I have that I'm using specifically for food storage or um, items that uh, I would use on a fairly regular basis now let's go back and uh, we'll talk some more now I have stated in the past that I have those two closets I have more of them um, I have more items stashed away in other areas but uh, those are the two main go-to closets for a lot of my things in uh, the buckets on the bottom I have things like flour and pasta the dry pasta that I would use um, I have uh, oatmeal and I have um, other things that I just didn't manage to get into jars and I'm quickly running out of space in those closets now I also have a whole bunch of um, milk crates that I use. Uh, now I use those specifically for jars that I have a multitude of the same item for, like my uh, tomato puree. Uh, since I make, oh, since I usually have on hand at least about 200 pint jars of tomato puree, those crates come in handy because I just, I will pile them uh, two pints high in each crate so I managed to get 26 in a crate and I will uh, pile the crates too high they might be able to go higher but at too high I managed to put them underneath um, that table that I work on most of the time so I have all my tomatoes in those crates rather than up in that cupboard uh, certainly it would be um, quicker and easier perhaps to be more accessible in that cupboard but I find the crate works as well it's in the kitchen and it's close at hand and it's only once in a while when the one crate uh, is emptied that I have to move things around I also keep Mark's chicken stock in one of those crates in the kitchen nowadays and try to keep close to one crate or 26 jars, uh, pint jars of chicken stock on hand simply because he goes through so much of it this time of year. Um, it's healthy, he enjoys it, I'm not gonna, you know, the only issue is uh, if I don't make it one week, oh well, he'll have to do without. That's what I told him one time, what are you gonna do if I don't make it? <laughs> and he says he'd probably die. And I, <laughs> no. Uh, he thinks he would get sick or a lot easier and a lot quicker if I didn't have the chicken stock on hand for him but that's fine it's it's become almost routine that at least once a week I, I'm baking bread and I'm making chicken stock so uh, par for the course these days that's part of what you do and um, for other things that I have put away I have great big bin totes where I have packaged up a lot of beans and rice that didn't go into jars. Now some of it did go into jars um, and some did not. So anything that was say vacuum sealed and packed away were in great big plastic bins and I've got two of those and they're both full. And I also found that I have, um, what do you call them? The uh, coolers yes that's it I have two coolers one small one and uh, which is more of a portable cooler and another larger one now they're also full of <laughs> vacuum sealed whether it's salt uh, sugar um, cornmeal beans rice any of those staples are also um, just put away in these a cubby hole where I could find it I also have as Mark found out three or four buckets I think four or five buckets actually stacked high in 
my own personal closet. And it's getting to the point where I may just empty out that closet. It's getting to the point where there's uh, all my suits from my business days no longer fit. Growing a little thicker around the waist and I'm having a hard time uh, taking that off. So I may just get rid of all my suits and uh, I don't know. I find it really difficult to do that, um, to give them away, and I think I'd rather work on losing my my waist right now. Um, those are good wool suits, and you don't find them anymore. Like right now, most of the clothing that you uh, find are just polyester garbage. So um, those, although I did buy them always on sale, they were. Um, at a time when I had to wear a suit and uh, they're good quality if perhaps a little dated but it seems to me that what is old is new again. I could remember having a beautiful pair of brown suede shoes when I was 15 and some <laughs> old ancient lady said she used to have the same thing when she was a young girl, exactly the same shoe. So yes, yeah, styles go away and they come back and uh, so yeah, there are quality clothes that I really don't want to get rid of, but we'll have to see what if I could find some other place to maybe pack them up. I don't know. So that's it. Closets, under tables, uh, in your coolers, any place. Uh, um, milk crates that are work just like buckets, but you know there are advantages too. And the milk crates can also be used for empty jars. Like once your jars are empty, especially pint jars. Once again they just seem to work perfectly for me for pint jars. With the regular size jars, mm, there's a little too much wiggle room in the jars, uh, so you kind of need a divider to stop them from clinking around and moving around too much. But with pint jars, I can get 13 on two levels with a very tiny, thin piece of uh, cardboard in between them. Uh, cardboard from a cereal box or something like that so that it's thin but sturdy and yeah and that they're great for storing your empties as well so it, you can always find spots and you can always make you know uh, more power to you if you can turn a bedroom into a pantry that is pretty awesome or if you have a good sized pantry where you can put everything I not in that position so I have to find nicks and crannies and cubby holes and so far I've done a pretty good job of it anyway keep stashing oh, I just keep hearing how there's going to be more and more food shortages as we go into the new year and how things are just going to be much uglier next year so uh, definitely try to find a, ma a means and a ways and uh, a place to put away what you can Okay, this is Tony from Her Homestead Skills. Hope you enjoyed this little video, and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.